Well, hello, YouTube. First off, I'd just like to thank everybody for their support. Um, I really appreciate the YouTube community. And several of you have given me so much good advice in your comments over the years. From little things like pointing out that my gibbs were loose on my cross slide. Maybe a little advice on how to sharpen a tool or a little bit of different approach on a job. I really appreciate it all. Also today I'd really like to thank Outside Screwball. Chuck sent me an email, which this is the hard copy version of, on making some split cotters. There's some information in there. He sent me about five pages worth. Great information. We'll be using a little bit of that today, so I really appreciate that, Chuck. So the first thing we need to talk about on starting this project is the order of operations. The first thing we need to do is square up the stock. Once we have that done, we're going to drill a small cotter hole, which will be down here in the part. Then we're going to drill the big cotter hole coming up the other way. And then we're actually going to make the little cotter. Then we're going to drill the hole that holds the indicator. Then we're going to make this notch over here. And then I haven't made up my mind yet as to which way will be better, but either we'll set the magnet in the notch here or we'll do the radius on the end of the stock. And then of course we have to smile at the ladies. So I get myself a piece of stock out of the scrap pile. It's three quarter inch by one inch. Pretty darn close. And I just take the wire wheel to it to get started. And I thought, well, I better make sure that the uh, indicator is going to kind of work in the corner of the stock that I'm planning on it. Next, I put the milling attachment on the lathe, get everything cleaned up there, make sure there's no burrs or metal filings or anything in there. And then start squaring it up with the indicator. And there's a little bit of untrueness in my jaws that way, but this way, it's perfect. Matter of fact, it's so perfect that I had to actually touch the indicator here, make sure the indicator is working. But the untrueness in the other direction was due to that surface finish. The back side there you can see is pretty bad surface finish. Then I realized the piece was a little bit too narrow to do any milling with because it's actually flush with the front of the jaws when I stuck it in there. So I stuck some quarter inch high speed steel stock behind it there and spaced it out just enough that I could mill it out and I decided to do a test run. <sighs> and I don't have enough travel to do both sides of the piece. So that means I have to do one side and flip it over and do the other side. So there I am starting in on this side. A little bit of a close-up there for you. And fast forward a little bit just so you have to watch it all. And take the piece out, flip it over. And do it again. I measured it just to see how long it was, just kind of for a reference. And then I got to realizing that technically my dial is already on zero from one end and where I want to make the notch I can just come back from that end I just did the right distance and start milling. So I set my dial to zero and start cranking. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that look like you're about an inch in, 
pretty close. And so on and so forth until we get to 35. And just start milling in the notch. And of course move the light because that wasn't set up right. And I thought I'd take this a little bit of a measurement and see if I'm in the right neighborhood. Now I need to figure out how to advance it enough that I know when I'm three-eighths of an inch in. Which would be really handy to have this little carriage indicator done so I could figure that out, wouldn't it? And right here, oh, backlash. I didn't have the dial turned the right direction. Forgot to take my backlash out. And it sure did jump on me. Ah. And I've been had by backlash. Then it was just a matter of moving around a whole bunch and taking that entire notch out of there. Just thought I'd throw in a far away view so you'd kind of see how I was working the milling attachment here. I had to remove the milling attachment from the lathe because I had to make a part for a customer. Really didn't want to do that. I wanted to leave it square. But sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, right? Uh, I tried making this part on the Rockford lathe and a mandrel, but uh, I don't have good enough speed selection on there right now, and the metal is work hardening on me. So I had to bring it over here to the Atlas and do it. So when I get these done, I'll get back to the other project. And finally, get back to this project. Clean up the lathe. Put the milling attachment back on. And I said, you know, since it's loft, it'd be pretty easy to check and make sure it fits. And it has slop in it. Ugh, it's kind of a sinking feeling when you don't have it right. Yeah, I don't think it'll affect too much, but I sure was disappointed. Alright, so here I am trying to figure out how far over to move in this direction. And how far to move in the vertical direction. Now this is the beginning of the cotter that I'm making. Clamping cotter. I was going to make a split cotter. But I decided that, for the sake of simplicity, I would just go with a single cotter on this. Since there's not going to be a lot of clamping force needed, and since this is the first cotter I'm making, I thought oh, it would be a lot easier just to make a single clamping one. And also, since I want to remove the indicator from this holder once in a while, I figured a single clamping cotter might work a little bit better too. 
Because if you have a double clamping cotter, that whole assembly can just fall right out of there. You know, the entire cotter, that is. So, this is the where the cotter will actually go into. I wanted to be half an inch in, so 501 thousandths is close enough. It'll have to actually be milled a little bit more later anyway. Here I am starting in on the cotter itself. In hindsight, I should have made the cotter first because I have the milling attachment on at this point. So, I dug through my drawer of bits and found this big one and decided to just put it in the milling attachment instead of taking the milling attachment off the lathe again. And it worked really well that way. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I had to get in really close here with the camera. I'll tell you what, I almost think I need glasses because I was having a hard time seeing that small stuff. And here's a little bit of Bumblebee engineering. As a, as Michael Reggie would say, uh, my chuck would not hold that drill bit. It wouldn't go down that small. So I grabbed a half inch chuck and cut off the head of a bolt and stuck it in there and clamped it in. So then we drilled and tapped this anyway. And here I am parting it off. A little bit more chatter this way. I had to go a little bit slower and a little bit easier, but it did part it off. It was alright. Like I said, I was really surprised by this milling attachment that it actually did work as well as it is. So there's the cotter all done. Well, not all done. but And I'm hoping that everything is on center and the screw will actually go in at this point. And it does. I'm very happy with that. There's a little bit of the cotter sticking out, but we'll take care of that later. But not in this video, unfortunately. We're gonna run out of time. So then I gotta find zero and come over and center drill it. And then pilot drill it. And then go in with a 3 8 end mill. And this way, it will make a 3 8 inch hole for the indicator, and it'll also cut off what I guess you could say as the corner of that cotter. It'll make the radius on one side, so it'll clamp in there properly. That's a brand new end mill too, and it was really making long stringy things. Trying to get that to focus, but it wouldn't work. And then I have to go back in where the cotter goes in and take off another 30 thousandths. That way it'll clamp properly. As you can see it there, it sticks in just a little bit. That little clamp. I didn't want it to go in too far because I don't want to smash the stem of that indicator. So I'll put it in there and loosen it just a little bit. And then tighten it. And yep, it works. That's good and tight. Oh yeah. That works good. Then of course it was time for a test run. Don't have the magnet in yet, but just holding it there, thought I'd see how it works. And something that was gratuitous on this is that screw hiding back there, it holds on the felt. It hits that before it bottoms out the indicator, if I set the indicator housing flush with the indicator holder. So it's really nice. So then I measured the magnets I was going to use, and they're a little bit under a half in diameter and just barely under 200 thousandths in thickness. And in hindsight, I should have done two magnets. And 
instead of just one in here. But, you know, first one I made, that's how things go, right? Just never know. Getting a quick reading to see how deep I was, and as you can see, I'm just a couple thousand shy of where I want to be. And so, instead of setting up the indicator and indicating that, I'm just going to push on it a little bit, take a little bit out, and measure again, because a couple thousand is going to go quick. And I didn't show this here, but I stuck the magnet on that wrench, and then used the wrench to drop it in there so it'd go in straight and square. And it is a little bit under flush. It was perfect depth. And there's that darn wiggle. Oof. Irritating. Yeah, it does clamp down good, though. That magnet's pretty darn strong. But I think, with that magnet being in the center of the notch, it rotates around it. This was a fun project, YouTube. I really enjoyed it. It's not done, but I'm going to consider this the end of this video because I'm out of time for the day. I got to get on to other things. I'm a little disappointed with the wiggle that I have in it there, but I think as long as I remember for now to always push it back, it'll be a wonderful addition to my tools and help me improve my accuracy on my lathe. I really am impressed with this dial indicator. Just being a cheapo grizzly one, I didn't think it'd be that good, but it it's really, really smooth. Thinking about getting a couple more just for making other indicating tools on the lathe. This project will be back in another video. I'm going to do a few things to it, like like round off this corner here, make a radius on there. I don't have time to do that right now. And also I really want to do something about this surface finish. I don't want to leave it just this cold roll finish that it is with a little bit of rust on it. I really want to make it nice. And also I'm kind of thinking about putting a mechanical lock on it to lock it onto the lays here, but I'm not 100% sure if I'll do that or not. So, now that we're at this point, I guess it's time to smile at the ladies. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I got this idea from Jayster1963, and he has some really good videos, so if you haven't checked out his channel, please do so. It's definitely worth your time watching. For the machinists out there, he has a series called Journey to Journeyman, where he's trying to take on the skills of running a lathe, being a machinist, and he's doing a fine job with that. He's also doing a tractor restoration, which is pretty neat. And every once in a while, you'll see him grilling some food. He seems like a great guy. He's been a long time commenter and a long time subscriber on my channel. And I appreciate his support.